Uh, also, if Demiria gets up to three magic like this, it's very likely that there's going to be a uh, Forbidden Flame very soon. But unfortunately, for Constrictor, I've drawn two POW Death Seekers. And that is how the game will end. Good game, Constrictor. Uh, I think we should probably give him another chance since uh, he, he did have a bad draw. He couldn't play anything on turn three. Uh, Cushy, uh, I'm more than happy to play with your Garant. If there's no uh, Cassandras out there that want to play, I want to give Cassandra priority since that's what I was focusing on today. But uh, I, obviously I can play against any deck and just discuss my own play. Okay, so as we see here, I'm going to have the first turn. You can tell because I have a 0 up here, and he has a 1. So uh, I'm going to be starting with one resource, and I've already drawn my Tithe Collector and my Wolf Captain, and I have a, I don't have any 3-cost creatures, but I do have the Crusader Watchman, who's a decent play. And I'll be able to play one of these guys on turn 3. So I like this hand. I will not mulligan. I will start with my Tithe Collector, and I will increase my might first. If this guy doesn't die to a firebolt, I'll be able to play uh, either the Wolf Marksman uh, next turn or the Warrior Seraph the turn after that. Alright, so he has played Halls of Amnesia, which forces an opponent to discard a card, and then he banished it with his event. And that's fair enough. And if we look at him, we see that he's leveled Might once, and then he drew a card. Uh, it's an interesting choice. I have three resources to spend. I could pull out a Wolf Marksman, Crusader Watchman, or a Wolf Captain. Um, I don't see... Yeah, actually, I'm going to pull out the Wolf Captain now, because he's going to have the most damage potential on the following turn. I'll be able to play two creatures, one here and one here, and he'll immediately be up to four damage. Oh, except I don't have enough resources, because I can't do math. But either way, he's still going to be doing more damage, because I'm going to play uh, this Warrior Seraph. No, I'll do the Marksman. Marksman there, and I'm okay. Um, obviously, I can't target this guy with anything, because of this symbol here means you can't target it. Instead of sacrificing my tithe, I, I want that extra income for now. I'm going to move it up there and make sure I keep it adjacent to my wolf captain so I can deal 3 damage. And right there, he's already sort of winning the trade on my hero. He's going to be able to deal 4 damage there, but instead he actually moved it up. If I can force him to chase this tithe collector around with a uh, juggernaut, that'll be uh, really good for me. And now he has a Lurker here. Alright, and he did not play it here. The Lurker is a very strong card because it has Fear 3. This means that my Wolf Captain cannot attack it because anyone with a Might requirement of uh, 3 or less cannot attack it because they're too afraid. But my Griffin Marksman has 4, so instead of putting it there to take damage and then die on Retaliation, he just set it aside. Now I look down here at these events first and I see nothing that I can use so I'm going to immediately increase my magic. Uh, my other option would be drawing a card but I'd rather get my magic up so I can make use of the spells that I have. And obviously uh, his theory here was to play this guy here so I can't move my Tithe Collector here and keep my max damage here. Although I still can't because I'll just move it afterwards but that was his thought process. Okay. And I'm going to play a Warrior Seraph, and I'm going to play it here. Uh, the reason for that is it has four, four might, so it can kill this Lurker if necessary. It's also adjacent to my Wolf Captain, so I can attack for max damage. And then I'll move my Tithe Collector away from his Juggernaut.
All right. So he has put a juggernaut down here. That juggernaut will uh, block this quite efficiently. I can't attack in that row now. Um, Chaos Imp. This makes it so anytime I play a card, I have to discard something. So that's a very uh, good card. Discarding is obviously something you never want to have to do. Uh, if I had any spells, I could kill it off, or I could kill this off and deal some damage, but I don't. I don't have anything, so I'm just going to attack there. I can't attack here, or this will die, but if I uh, just hold there, he can't attack either, because then he'll die in his next turn. So this is uh, a stalemate here. This I just can't attack because of fear. Um, I'm going to play a Warrior Seraph right here. And again, the reason for that is because it's my most expensive creature I have right now. And uh, I can only play... I, I didn't want to play two cards and have to discard twice. Now this option I think is fairly easy for me. I kind of want to discard the Dark Assassin because two health is not going to be enough to survive this late in the game. And now I will instead draw a card and end my turn. And the reason I'm stacking around this guy again is for his passive. He gains one damage for each guy next to him. But now Constrictor has leveled up his magic to three and in comes the Forbidden Flame. And I was sort of hoping he didn't have it yet, because he did not play a Magic Peddler, which lets him fetch it for free. So it's kind of lucky, I would say, I guess, that he had it in his starting hand, or in his top uh, 11 cards. But it's not a huge problem. Um, I can now play a lot of things. I think I will go with this play here. And now since I don't have a wolf captain, I'm going to focus on the zigzag pattern that I talked about earlier. Uh, if he levels up his magic again, that means he has some fireballs in his deck. And fireballs deal damage to all creatures adjacent to his target and that target. So I want to zigzag here to sort of minimize damage I take from his AoE spells. And right now I do have a 10 health advantage on his hero. His Forbidden Flame really helped him uh, level out the board though. And he's just played a Hellfire Maniac, which I think is probably the best card in his deck. Hellfire Maniacs just ruin my day all the time. But uh, I'll attack here. I can Word of Light if I want to. It doesn't gain me enough right now, I don't think, because it's not going to be killing the Maniac. It will be killing that, but I don't care about that 2 damage right now. If you ever have 20 health, the, it, basically the, my theory is if you still have 20 health, you just shouldn't care about your hero's health at all. It will slow down how you play, and it's just not necessary. Okay, so... I really don't want to play anything behind the Maniac, but I, I guess I will anyways. I'll play a Marksman there because he can survive, and then I'll play a Seraph there and draw another card. Any tips on how to beat a Mar? Uh, <laughs> yeah, tips on that are hard to come by. Uh, evil enough. Yeah, I mean, there's there's a lot of ways to do it. What I don't like about it is that you have to like try to make it work. And if you ever have to try to counter someone, I just I'm not happy. Okay, so to explain what I did, uh, I used this two cost just because I want to deal an extra damage there, and because I don't, I, I sort of just wanted to play one more creature, and then continue drawing a card. The more cards I have in my hand, the better I feel.
Okay. So this setup alone is enough to make me use my Ward of Light next turn. Alright, and so now comes his Abyssal Lord. And this is the point in the game where if you haven't won against Demiria, then you're probably about to lose. Abyssal Lords are such good, good creatures. But, again, I decided to play that card so I could kill both creatures in this lane. Um, I can't kill that. Uh, this is technically a melee creature, so I can give something melee guard if I want, or I can deal an extra damage to his hero. I think instead what I'll do is play these creatures next to that guy, and I'll be good with that. Yeah, so the things that counter the Amar OTK... Oh, the Hellfire Maniac. As I said, ruining my day, just like always. That really was unfortunate. Alright, he moved his Lurker for some reason. Maybe he has a second one, I don't know. Because he should have blocked that with his Lurker. The things that beat Amar are... Mill decks, um, the Blind Arbiters of Vent... Uh, Demiria with um, Void Arbiters and uh, not a lot of other things necessarily. Uh, if you can find any way to disrupt his combo, so like sometimes you can play a Soul Reaver or an Altar of Asha or something like that and you'll be able to uh, take care of it. Okay, so we are in a terrible position now. This is very perilous. I think I'm going to force him to keep his Hellfire Maniac there. God. I got to deal that one damage to it. I, I, if I don't take care of that, it's just going to win him the game. And it, it probably already has anyways. I'll leave that there. Okay. So Constrictor playing his Halls of Amnesia. He's going to discard my Cleansing Light which is probably the worst thing that could have happened to me right now. Because now if he plays the Might of Nature, I'll have no way of stopping this at all. Already I have almost no chance. Alright, and he has used his Abyssal Lord to kill off my uh, Radiant Glory, because this guy has attack anywhere. Yeah, I guess Demiria's uh, passive ability is kind of useful too. Okay, so at this point I only have two cards in my hand. I did draw my second Cleansing Light, that's really good. Although he does have his Demiria ability to just kill things. So if I play my POW here, he's down to three health, which means if I draw another POW, good times will happen. Um, I can't play my DA yet. Unfortunate. Um, I think I'm going to move this guy up here. Interestingly, his Imp Jester also prevented him from playing single target.